So derived answers. A new feature, I'm going to close this document. Here I've got a document uh, and we'll use a couple of der derived answers in it. There's two reasons to use a derived answer. One of them is really critical and the other one is more of just a con convenience. So I'm going to start out with the critical one. In this document, in the Q&A table, I ask the form user for a series of numbers here for the value of several properties that they've entered up above. And then in the form, the total value is automatically calculated with a uh, formula field. Here I've got a paragraph and uh, I want to make it conditional depending on the total value. If the total purchase price is above $5 million, I want to include this paragraph. If the total purchase price is below $5 million, I want to exclude it. The problem is that since I have not asked a question in the Q&A table for the total value, there's no way for me to create that condition. If I hit the condition button here, total value doesn't show up anywhere in my list of potential uh, condition parameters. So I have to ask an additional question in my table before I can make a condition that depends upon it. And that condition is going, I'm sorry, that question is going to be called total, total value of all properties. I don't want to make the form user do that calculation. The, the form tool is small, smart enough to do that calculation on its own, so there's no reason to make the form user do it. So here I'm going to create what's called a derived answer. That means take the information from other answers and answer a question all by itself. So I'll click my smart answer button. Here's the new derived choice down at the bottom and click OK. Having done that, this answer box becomes a, sort of a private workspace where I can do whatever I want. Uh, it's a little mini form. I can insert fields, lists, conditions. I can get as elaborate as I like here. And the result of all of that gets assigned to my new total field. And I can use that total field to create conditions. So let me do that so you can see what I mean. Uh, here I want a field that gives me the total value of all these. I'm going to use a formula, which you might not have used yet, but this will give you a little sneak peek at formulas. Uh, so I click field and I want a formula. I'm using the function button here. Uh, the name of the function I'm using is list sum. It gives me the sum of a list of items and the items I'm summing is the values. There's my list sum values field. I'll click OK. And that gives me my formula, which is going to give me a total of all of these numbers. That field is the same field that I used up here in the form. It was created in the exact same way. If I wanted to same, save some steps, I could have just copied this field up here and pasted it down into my derived answer. Now when I click the fill button, notice that the derived answer calculates itself. It totaled up all that. That information is going to be available in a field called total, which means I'll reset here. I now have the information I need to create this condition. I'll click the condition button and say if the total is more than 5 million, then include that paragraph. I'm going to color that paragraph red just so it's easier for us to keep track of it here. And I'll point out when I click the fill button that since the total here is less than 5 million, my red paragraph has disappeared. But if the total, let me add a digit in here and fill again, If the total is more than 5 million, then the paragraph is included, which is just the condition I needed. And the only way to accomplish that is with a derived answer. The second situation where you might want to use a derived answer is really just more of a convenience thing. I'm going to reset this form. 
Notice that in, in this form, I have a defined term, which is going to be either corporate buyer or homeowner, and it depends on whether or not the buyer is a corporate entity or not. What it's keyed to is whether or not the pronoun here is it. If it's it, it's going to use the, the term corporate buyer throughout. If it's not it, it's going to use the term homeowner throughout. And this defined term appears several places in the form. Here it is, here it is again, here it is again, here it is again. So it appears over and over in the form, and it's kind of a big clunky set of code. It makes the form a little difficult to read. So I'm going to make this uh, easier to read, easier to code form by using a derived answer. I'll add another answer here at the bottom of the list, and I'll call it uh, buyer term. Uh, and it's going to be either corporate owner or home owner. This is just a note to myself in the question column. It's not even necessary, but it'll help me keep track of what I'm doing. And over here, I'm going to make this a derived answer. Derived. And once again, I can put anything I like in this box. Since I've already created all of the coding to generate the proper term here, I'm just going to copy that and paste it down here. Now, whatever is the result here, either corporate buyer or homeowner, is going to be assigned to the buyer term field automatically. So I can, here in my form, use a simple field, field code instead of all of the, uh, the conditional text, and the field I want is buyer term. I'll copy that field and I'll paste it in everywhere where I used to have those two conditions back to back. And I'll end up with a much shorter form, much easier to read. And because fields are much quicker to process than conditions, this form is going to end up being a much faster form too. Uh, you won't notice the difference here since it's only one page long, but if you had a 20 or 30 or 50 page form with this kind of uh, field in it, you'd notice an improvement in speed as well when you run the form. I'll click the fill button to run it. And there's my proper term showing up everywhere it needs to be. Here's how it was calculated using the derived answer. The last thing to show you about derived answers is, let me reset here, notice that these two questions get answered automatically by the form tool. There's no reason to bother the form user with it. And in fact, it would be distracting and confusing for the form user if they saw these two items in their Q&A table. So I want to hide these two questions from the questions and answers from the form user. I can do that by clicking row show hide. That toggles on and off the visibility of all derived answers in the Q&A table. I'll click it now to hide them. It tells me they're now hidden. And it shows me a little double line here. I'm not sure if you can see it on your screen. There's a little double line that indicates that there are derived answers hidden, uh, but they're not on display for the form user, so they won't distract and confuse the form user. The form user just responds to the questions that actually need responses. Then they click the fill button, and they get the end result. If I, as the form creator, need to come back and revise this form later, I might want to turn back on the display of the derived answers so that I can work with them and maybe edit them. But once I'm done, I'll hide them again so the form user doesn't have to be bothered by them. And that's our introduction to derived answers. If you want to check into those more, uh, example 10 on page 96 of the expert user guide uh, has a nice example there you could work through.